Alright, listen. Audio mediums have existed for almost 150 years. Some of the favorite among these were reel-to-reel -reel machines, popular in the 50s and 70s, until they were ultimately replaced by cassette. But what if you could have both? Using the most delicate manners to remove this tape head, you can see it works once I wave this magnet by it as the line of the oscilloscope moves. I can't just use the signal from the head directly, of course. It's too weak. I'm going to have to make an amplifier. So now the amplifier is connected to this, and as you can see, it's not much louder, but let me demonstrate this. And then I turn it up. Okay, so I've made like three of these now, and uh, none of them work for some reason. I'm not able to find out, and I tried another one with a MOSFET. And uh, it still didn't work, so I'm going to have to think of something different here. Turns out I needed an auxiliary cable, and uh, unfortunately I don't just have one lying around, but thanks to the convenience of e-commerce. Okay, so what's going on now is I have the amplifier we just made going to one of these, uh, it's like a 3.5 millimeter to like an RCA adapter thing. And then that's going to this 8 ohm speaker here, so let's see if this does anything. So as you can see, it has no problems driving this 8 ohm speaker, in fact it actually sounds pretty good. So an easy way to avoid copyright is actually if you just turn this up enough, and you let the clipping take over. As you can tell, it's barely audible now, and therefore YouTube copyright will have no effect on this. It's pretty genius, if you ask me. I made this simple tool to cut the tape to the right size by dragging it by the blade. What I'm trying to do is cover this tape here with um, the ferric oxide and I aim to do that by simply just taking scoops of it, putting on the paper and then kind of just running it over it. Alright, let's get to business shall we? It's like a YouTube unboxing video. Ugh. Oh, let's look at that, it looks like black powder kinda. So. kind of drag it through. It actually seems like the oxide's doing a great job covering the tape. It's very... looks exactly like how I would expect it to. My goal is to do this until it's not... the sticky side has completely... basically vanished. Because then it won't just stick to things at random. Cards such as these actually have magnetic strips on them as well. You can hear it when I drag it by the head. After making the tapes, I wanted to see if I can record anything on it. I played music through an amplifier and then into the head to see if anything could get recorded to the tape while dragging it across.
I was able to buy a pack of cassettes for very cheap. As you can see, all of these intended purposes we're going to disregard. But I can't actually tell whether these are new old stock or are still in production. Judging by the clear plastic on the tape, I would assume it's semi-contemporary, as they were used in prisons. Anyways, I need in here to get measurements, so I'll go ahead and take it apart now. I'm measuring the spool here because originally I wanted to make the reels compatible with the spools to save me from having to manually spool the tape onto the reels, but I decided against it later. Pro tip for reinstalling screws into plastic is to back thread it first until you hear it click. Then when you screw it in, you don't run the risk of cross-threading it by accident. That's the cassette put back together. I'll revisit this later when I need it. Okay, so while I'm in the process of making this, I found one of these. This is one of many, but it assumes the alias Super USB Cassette Capture. Alright, now it's time to dig into this thing. The reels finished printing, and this is what I got for an end result. As you can see, the center hole is a bit larger. That's just to make putting it together easier. Another cool feature of this is that it's compatible with reel spools on a normal cassette machine. Okay, now I can revisit this cassette from earlier and finally get these reels put together. What is it, like, week three of this project? They aren't going to need to come apart again, so I'm just going to super glue them. It should suit it well, and super glue is very strong on PLA. This reel here is the one that's going to be receiving the tape, and thus it has nothing bound to it. The reel with the tape on it will have to be glued to the reel so I can spool it without slipping it around. Of course to spool 135 meters of tape by hand would take far too long. I sped up the process by using my uh, little machine here. Alright, so here's the machine finally. Turning it to the back, we can see the belt drive and the path that it takes. To keep the reel constantly spinning at a varying speed, I use this small wheel of TPU that just allows enough friction to spin it while not stopping the motor, since the reels spin at different speeds. Alright, let's see if it'll actually move a tape across correctly. I've now set it up to record. Let's try and see if anything will go onto the tape. I'm gonna let it drag by just for a bit to get a good sample, hopefully. Connect the output of the board, and let's have a listen to how it sounds. It does sound pretty awful, and it's nothing but interference from the motor. But I have an idea. If I can record and play back something with turning it by hand, maybe something will come through. Okay, nothing really, but... I'm not done with this yet. I still have one ace up my sleeve. It's broken. Like, it literally does not work. I wanted to try and use this machine to record something onto the cassette that I knew it could play back, and then play it on my machine to see if anything would work, but that's just not going to happen, I suppose. 
It seems this didn't really work out as well as I thought. This is probably something I'm gonna have to return to in the future, but this took a long time to make this video. Anyways, if you enjoyed, check out some of the other stuff I've made. That's it for today.